golf courses, and go play the golf course, and, or you know, be there for dinner, or what have you. So, with that being said, they never buttoned it up. And so people actually can come out at night and get on with four-wheelers or motorcycles or what have you. I mean, there's times that um, my, uh, the rangers will be uh, uh, chasing people off, walking their dogs in the middle of a, a Saturday when there's a golf cart out there. So there's liability purposes, getting hit with a golf cart, getting hit with a golf ball. So um, the last two years, we had some extensive damage done to the greens, which you know the greens are uh, very important to the operation of a golf course. So. Um, We're this not is closing a, those areas. Like, have you ever looked at that? Sorry. That's what the fence is going to do. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. That's what the fence is going to do. We're going to button it up. Come on. And we're going to do it. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> that so that's the idea of this. Of these two items are to button up the golf course and not allow the vandalism and having unwanted uh, visitors on the golf course that shouldn't be there. Is there any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to add, um, they, both, both the um, Gulf Lake Estates and the Gulf Lake, what's it kind of, what are they, Gulf, Gulf, Gulf View? Gulf View. Gulf View condominiums. Um, they were both sold uh, with the concept that they would have uh, golf course access. So we are leaving, leaving an access gate there that will have a keypad for them to get in and out. But there will be accountability. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, we'll be able to determine who was, who's been in and out. Um, we did, uh, related to the condos, our original goal was to actually connect in between the units. So there would be like a black rod iron fence and we would use the, bar the, the condos as a natural barrier. The association would not sign off on that. So what they wanted us to do is put in um, uh, electronic gates, which became very expensive for the city of Taylor. So what we did is we just went uh, one foot onto our property line and that's where the proposed fence is gonna go. Is there anything else in 13 or 14? Okay. Final item 15, so motion received and filed. TIPO approval of Fairfax Electric low bid to remove existing lights and fixtures and replace with LED lights and fixtures at the Taylor Sports Flex for an amount of $192,058. Is there any questions <coughs> on this one? All right, hearing none. Item 16, so motion received and filed. TIPO approval of Fairfax Electric, most qualified bid to remove existing and install new generator at the Taylor Sportsplex for a total amount of six hundred eighty-six thousand six hundred twelve dollars. So my numbers are switched here. I think I yeah, mine too. Oh, or did I get that wrong? So fifteen is the sixteen. Uh, 16. Mm -hmm. no, I yeah. Okay, so it's wrong. That'd be it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so my question is, so what what made them the most qualified? So that's not a tax here. There's no like extortion no or anything. Back up on them. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, set, we'll send that to you. Uh, yeah, there was uh, <coughs> different companies that did it. They were the lowest qualified. Sure, yeah. Okay. They were the lowest qualified by like forty thousand. Yeah, but Jeff, what was the what was the okay? Was the it didn't company? say lowest. It just said best qualified. Yeah, right. Most qualified. So, That's Mr. Not. Chairman, so to the so council. So yeah, so you're doing that. When we looked at this uh, generator project, we looked at it from reference. Where do they have these generators? I mean, we're drawing a lot of power out of the sports flex. So, you know, with the basic engineering, we had to see who else, you know, where have they provided these generators? And CAT, you know, this is going to be a CAT generator, and, you know, we've got a good relationship with CAT, but the generator, University of Michigan Hospital, um, uh, uh, DMC Hospitals. Okay, uh, what the you know, that Yeah, I mean, like, places we know that they have this size of a unit that was specially engineered to have the right result when they needed this backup uh, generator. So uh, they, they also provided in the quote um, a warranty if our system goes down to bring in those portable semi-truck generators so that we wouldn't lose our power for the, the ice cream melting. And, and, and so we felt that the total package uh, they were the most qualified because of, you know, some of these were first generation because these units are so large. Some of these other companies didn't even have the unit. They were searching different companies to put together the units just to handle the load that was needed at the sports place. So that's kind of the idea of, you know, uh, both Mr. Ewan and I were on the phone crazy for two days talking to all these different uh, businesses and different places making sure that what was put on paper was actually a deliverable that they experienced. So it's a big project. This project 
Uh, it'll be started along the way, but it really won't be complete until we start building ice next August. That's how long it's going to take. So it's going to take a while. There's work being done up until that point, but we won't hit the, swing, uh, the transfer switch key and be able to be on. And, and in this generator package, and I don't want to, you know, boy, but my goal was, hey, listen, I, I don't want a generator that just allows the building to keep the ice and safety lights on. We need to have a business interruption generator. So right. if we lose power, we can host the hockey, we can host the soccer, okay. we can run everything the building, like not miss a beat so that we don't lose that opportunity to generate revenue. And that's how it's designed, or it will be, it is designed to be. Because right now, that's not the case. It just, and also with that item before that, moving over to the LED, that it frees up a load to allow us to run the soccer arenas and, and some other things on this generator should we have to. All right, anything else on 15 or 16? All right, or I move on to item 17. It's a motion to approve area towing markets towing and J&M towing for the City of Taylor Police Department towing services based upon the terms and conditions stipulated in the request for proposal RFP. Um, this is one that we can actually discuss tonight. Uh, I'll be asking council to postpone it until the March meeting, uh, but we can go ahead and chief what are you sure? Absolutely. I'm sure everyone's been waiting for this topic, so I know this is a favorite one for everybody. Uh, there's a couple of documents we're handing you. We're going to go through them. Uh, the deputy chief and I would be happy to answer questions as we go through them. So um, I did want to start off by saying this. Um, I've been intimately involved in the towing process in the city of Taylor way back in my days in special ops in 97. Um, towed a ton of abandoned cars, actually hold a part of record for towing cars in one day. But, um, we moved on to the traffic division and, and handled a lot of these things as well as the patrol op, So, And I can say with complete confidence that what you're seeing in front of you with this request for proposal is by far the most professional effort I've seen to try to alleviate um, a very sore point, uh, not only for many of you in here, but um, the citizens of the city and, and our police department. So um, I kind of appreciate what's in, uh, what they've done with this, and uh, we're going to go through each one of the documents. So. First one you should have in front of you is a towing RFP summary. Uh, there were five vendors that had turned in their request for proposal. Um, the first one would be Lions Towing and Great Lakes Towing. Those were both excluded. They didn't meet uh, basic requirements. Uh, the other three were J&M, Martin's Towing, and Area Towing. Uh, that page tells you basically how they met your qualifications. There was a towing evaluation committee that was established. <coughs> Chief, one second. Where, where are you reading yeah, from right now? Because I want to make sure it was on the same page. Yeah, I'm not saying that's not the very right. first page. The very first one. The one he handed out. Yeah, not the RFP. No. Okay. This, this one says this one. towing RFP summary. Oh. That's the one he good. handed out to us. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh. Now, there's a lot of paperwork. I apologize, but there's a uh, tremendous amount of work that's been going into this project. So. Okay, you can continue to. So uh, again, that gives you a summary of why each one of those vendors uh, made a pass or didn't make a pass that first phase. Um, as I was speaking, there were uh, a towing committee that was established and four of those five members that are among us tonight. Uh, Councilman Johnson's here, um, Director Bach, uh, Fire Chief's here, Deputy Chief Hopper was on there um, as well. And uh, Richard Miller, uh, obviously, is not among us tonight. So those were uh, part of the members that uh, formed up that committee. They scored out each one of those uh, vendors. And of course, um, if you look on that last sheet, it's going to give you those scores. So um, area towing and Martin's tied at uh, the first, and then J and M came in uh, at second at three points. So the next sheet you're going to take a look at it is on our department letterhead. And it says background investigation for towing RFP. Uh, Deputy, uh, Deputy Chief Hopper and Commander Shrewsbury uh, were in charge of doing these backgrounds. And just to give you an idea of what the backgrounds were, they were not only a physical visit to the sites, uh, but they also looked at um, a criminal background and they looked at um, uh, anything else that might have uh, issues for the city with this towing. So.